Shalom. Today we're going to continue studying the Aleph Tav and we're going to learn the different meanings that this uh, letter combination can mean aside from the direct object marker. And one of those meanings is the word with. There are two words that mean with in Hebrew. One is uh, im, which is the ayin mem, and the other is the Aleph Tav. Both of them conjugate with personal pronouns. You're probably familiar with the uh, im, meaning with, from Isaiah 7:14. Therefore Adonai himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name im anu el. Im with anu us el, God. God is with us. Some of the uses that we find for the uh, where the Aleph Tav must be translated as with in Song of Songs 4 8, come with me, ET, with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon, look from the top of Amana, from the top of Shinir and Hermon, from the lion's den, from the mountains of the leopards. In Genesis 24 55, and her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us, Itanu, a few days, at least ten. After that, she shall go. And we're going to look at a chart of these um, conjugations. In Genesis 34, 16, then, you will, then will we give our daughters unto you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, Itchem, and we will become one people. So we're looking at a chart of the conjugations of the two different uses of Aleph Tav with their personal pronouns attached. So on the right we see the conjugation for the Aleph Tav when it is used as the direct object and on the left when it is used with with and we can see that in the most cases, they are different, except for in the case of all y'all. Just talking now about the letters, they're pronounced differently. They're both pronounced differently. So in the direct object marker, if it's something having to do with me, then it's OT. But if, if it's with me, then it's ET. And we see the direct object marker has that Bob. And we're going to talk about um, how that Avav appears in another lesson. The only ones, if you take out all the vowels that look exactly the same, are with, all y'all, uh, plural, feminine, and masculine. But generally, we can look at them and see how to translate this combination of letters. Here we have a verse from Deuteronomy 5, 2 and 3, just to show you the use of the im together, and also the two uses of the Aleph Tav, where one means the direct object marker and the other one means with. So in the first verse, uh, Deuteronomy 5, 2, Yahweh Eloheinu karat kut imanu, with us, breach a covenant in Horeb. So here it is clearly with, he cut the covenant with us, Imanu. In the second verse, uh, let's go down to the uh, last uh, preposition there, or the Aleph Tav, uh, where it says, Itanu. So it says, Ki Itanu Anachnu, with us. We. So the Itanu and the Imanu from the first verse both mean the same with and they're conjugated for us. In the middle line here, what we're looking at is Lo et Avotenu. And, and we can't translate this as a direct object because we're talking about cutting a covenant. So if you make that Aleph Tav there a direct object marker, then basically 
It's saying that Yahweh did not cut our fathers. Well, it's not about cutting our fathers. The second Aleph Tav is et habrit. That is the direct object marker. He cut what? The covenant, the brit. So the first Aleph Tav in that second line there, lo et avotenu, we have to translate it in English as with. Not with our fathers, cut Yahweh, what the covenant. So we can see in the English, I put the Aleph Tavs in there, and you can see clearly just by the meaning of it, the first one has to be with, and the second one is a direct object marker. Not it, not with our fathers, cut Yahweh, what? The direct object at the covenant, at Habrit. Even so, this is not perfect, as we see in Isaiah 59, 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them. And we would expect it to say, Etam, to conjugate uh, specifically for the with, but it does not. It says Otam, it looks like the direct object, but clearly the covenant is with them. The covenant is not them themselves. So we're trying to decide when we will translate this Aleph Tav even among the, um, the standalone Aleph Tavs, when it, will it be the direct object and when will it be the, uh, the word with? From Genesis 26.8, we see that um, Isaac and Rebekah have gone down to Avimelech and have told the same lie that his father told, she is my wife. And then Avimelech looks out the window and he sees they're fooling around in a way which indicates that Rebecca is in fact his wife. So we see the Isaac, Mitzachek, which is translated as sporting, et alef tav rifka. Uh, sometimes the prepositions uh, from one language to another can really vary. For example, in Spanish, people say, I am married con so-and-so with that person. We say married to, they say, they use the word with. Here we can imagine, suppose Isaac was tickling her, then uh, we would not need a preposition either. But because of the verb sporting, we do in English have to use the word with. Sporting with Rebecca. So it's kind of in the sense of a direct object marker, but not exactly. Here is another example of a standalone olive type that has to be translated as with. Uh, Uriah, Uriah is off in battle. David has gotten his wife Bathsheba pregnant. And so he calls him home and tries to uh, lure him into going home and sleeping with her so that they can say the child belongs to her husband. But Uriah refuses to go. And so he uh, actually lay down. He slept at the door of the king's house. Olive Tav, all the servants of his lord, referring back to David. Well, clearly, Uriah is not all the servants. Uriah is with all the servants. So just by the meaning and the import, we have to say that this Aleph Tav translates as with. So all this brings us to a uh, kind of an interesting situation in Genesis 4.1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man, Aleph Tav, Yahweh. So the King James translates that as from. Uh, it's neither with or the direct object. Let's see some other translations. In the ESV, she says, I have gotten a man with the help of Yahweh. Of course, there's nothing there about the help. It's just the olive top. Uh, in the NASB, I have gotten a man-child, again, with the help of Yahweh. 
and the JPS is the same thing with the help of Yahweh. But the question comes now as, as we read, did she actually believe that Cain, Aleph Tav, Yahweh, that he was Yahweh, that, that she was going to see an immediate fulfillment of the promise that, uh, that Elohim gave to them in the garden, that, uh, that there would be an immediate messianic fulfillment. I don't know. It's just a thought, something to think about with this positioning of the Aleph Tav. The idea of the width also gives us some insight into uh, the translation of John 1.1 1, 1 into Hebrew. And there are a few different modern Hebrew translations. And I actually prefer the Delich translation. And I think this gives us some insight. Why did he use the Aleph Tav instead of the Im? Because he could have used the Im. So we see Bereshit Hayah Davar. In the beginning was the word, Vahadavar haya et Elohim. And the word was with Elohim, or the word was Elohim, Velohim haya hadavar. And Elohim was the word, Hu haya breshit. He was in the beginning, what? With Elohim, or he was Elohim. It's a direct object. In the beginning was the word. What was the word? It was the Aleph Tav in Bereshit 1.1. 1, 1. Bereshit bara Elohim Aleph Tav. In the beginning, God created. And there was the Aleph Tav from the very beginning. As Yeshua said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the Aleph and the Tav. I am the first and the last. I have been there since the beginning. Next time, we'll continue on with uh, some more meanings. There are three more meanings for the word, which is Aleph Tav. In the meantime, keep your eyes on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.